It is now 8 o'clock on March 25th, 2019, and I am going to talk about what I was able to write down from what came to me last night. Um, before I do that, I want to um, oops, mention something that happened uh this was the 20th. There's a lot of stuff here that um, I'm not sure it's worth talking about at this point. But this is from the 23rd, probably, um, 4 or 5 in the morning, this idea that robots just pass you by. I just wanted to mention that. that it's not really robots. It's um, people who are trained through mind control to behave in certain ways um, and... It's mostly regarding me. I don't know that this is true of others. Um, but part of this game that they're playing with Chris and I is to pretend that we're nobody. And that nobody knows who we are. Um, so some people will know who we are um, and don't acknowledge it. And then there's a lot of cases where even if they didn't know who we are, We've um, shown ourselves to be outstanding in some way or another, but we don't get credit for it. And we don't get recognized because that's where people just have it in their heads that they're not allowed to um, really give us any credit or recognize us for anything. That our whole purpose, okay, I mean, the underlying message of this is the whole purpose that of our existence is to be exploited by other people. Uh, so then there's last night. Now, it's a big deal with me realizing that these people that I've been following and getting information from for the past two years, actually a little longer than two years, um, I'm going to get into the whole history of it later, but this is um, Catherine Horton, Karen Melton Stewart, and them, but especially Catherine Horton for me. I got a lot of information from Catherine Horton. Turns out she's total disinformation, and this was a confidence game, and they've got something planned, um, and that's what I'm trying to figure out, what they have planned, and, you know, obviously, um, I, I think it's something for me. Um, I want to foil this before it comes to fruition, because it's not good. So that's the backdrop. Okay, so this is what I got from last night. On the 24th, uh, at 11.24 p.m., I just got the idea of lots of images of drones flying. So, yes, there were a, there's been a lot of aircraft outdoors lately. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff where um, some of it I've uploaded, some of it I haven't published yet. Um planes and drones are crossing over each other or flying close to each other. Um, lots of different things in the sky at once. Like I can look up in the sky sometimes and I'll see a jet and maybe a high altitude drone and a low altitude drone. And then um, the birds that are flying around also seem to be um, definitely controlled like on a regular basis now. Um, sometimes you can't tell for sure, but sometimes, you know, it just gets more and more obvious. Um, because the birds are being controlled in such a way that their behavior isn't really normal most of the time. Or they engage in certain things that might seem normal, but they do it in, you know, very, in ways that catch my attention. I've noticed a big move that they do with the crows um, as far as catching my attention has to do with making crows drink from certain areas. They'll drink from a puddle or from a gutter or something like that to kind of show me something's going on in a certain location. Um, now I see an image of, it looks like the number 699 on a car roof, the inside of a car. This seems to relate to the um, closing down process of techno crime fighters in which Millicent Black, the person who calls herself Millicent Black, which I don't believe that's her name, is inside of a car like with a white interior at the very end. There's a few things about that. I think she possibly did that just to kind of gloat a little bit about um, her getting some sort of benefit from having participated in this. 
uh, when I made the video last night where I, you know, said, okay, all of Techno Crime Fighters and Joint Investigation Team is a complete operation. It's not done yet. You know, Techno Crime Fighters, that weekly broadcast, shut down after a couple of years. But the operations that these women are involved in have not been shut down. Um, and they're just moving into a next phase. So that's what I'm trying to understand, what, what they're really up to, and to put a stop to it before they hurt somebody, especially me. <laughs> um, uh, and a lot lot's coming to me, like every, I would say, every few hours, you know, I feel like things are just getting clearer and clearer and clearer as to put, in terms of people's associations to other people, the deceptions that they're pulling and... Um, a picture is beginning to form what their ultimate goal is. Um, maybe not ultimate goal, but I, they definitely, I am definitely part of their goal, if not their entire goal. Um, it relates to me personally. So, um, I have a vested interest in finding out what the hell they're up to. So, The other thing that the inside of the car makes me think of is the inside of my parents' Porsche. They had this Porsche when I was very young with these dots on the ceiling. And um, I tended to look at those dots until I sort of, um, until they looked like they were floating, which was, I think, sort of a um, kind of a trance thing. But I don't know. Um, mostly I think this is about Millicent filming that last episode from the inside of what looked like a new an interior of a new car at 11:44, I get the image of a Spanish style tile roof that kind of thing so this seems to link to the arch idea that keeps coming up the idea of arches being a symbol of danger and specifically you know like you something you go through and then get stuck into something but these roofs you will see in certain parts of California that have a lot of Spanish influence. And Monterey is what... For some reason, images of Monterey come up to me again and again and again. Monterey Pines, or um, not Monterey, is it Pine or Spruce? I guess it's Monterey Spruce, something like that. Those A certain type of tree, um, these types of roofs... I feel like there's very early memories that I have associated with places like this that I have not been able to explain exactly why I was in, at these places. I just feel like there's a link. And Monterey is one of those places. Why am I linked to Monterey? I have no idea. It might have to do with something, uh, be related to Joel Hedgepeth and I don't know. Anyhow... I just see this image of this roof, and I think it's I think it's relating these shapes to the Japanese what you know what I'm now calling a Japanese fish scale design, and arches, and things like that. Then at 1:25 a.m., I just get a name, Sir Richard Kurt. I wrote Kurt House, but I think it's Kurt Hose. Don't know why. I mean, this is linked to Ancestry.com. You know, me doing Ancestry on Chris and I. When I just looked up there yesterday, though, this guy is not in our family tree, even. There is a Richard Kurthose. His father was Robert Kurthose, and Robert Kurthose is a great uncle of Chris's, the son of um, William the Conqueror. So Richard Kurthose would be the grandson, but he was a quote-unquote bastard grandson. And one of the ways he's referred to is N-I-G-E-R, which is the French word for black, so that's interesting. And this turn, this idea of bastard comes up again and again. When I go into Chris's family tree and I'm looking into the Plantagenet line, um, I'm looking through the Moon family line. So that is a woman named Rachel, I think her name was Rachel Jane Moon, that married Chris's great-great-grandfather in the 1800s. So when I go into Rachel Jane Moon's family tree, I find all these um, names that have the word B in them, like Beeson. Um, and I can take it back to William the Conqueror and a lot of other interesting people. Um, but that's not Chris's targeted family line after five generations. 
His, he's targeted through the Newman family line. The Newman family line peters out um, around 1400s. So that's something to actually I should explore uh, is what uh, what is the deal with this name Newman? I think that the story that has been told about the name Newman is not correct. I think the so the typical story that I've heard is that the name Newman is like um it's like a new middle class that came out of um you know some shifts in society to where you know it, the um system of feudalism was no longer so set in stone and people could actually have some upward mobility and things like that. I'm not sure. I don't think that's what it was at all. I think what it was is at, directly linked to this game that somebody assumed that name as sort of a form of anonymity and it was chosen, I believe, because it sounds like Norman because this is all seems to have come through Normandy, France. Um, I think it's chosen because it sounds like no man, like no one and nobody and no one and all those things are plays on the name Newman. Uh, snowman is another play on the word Newman, right? Well, especially the um, Frosty the Snowman in the song where they talk about building a snowman. We can pretend he's Parson Brown and all this stuff. So where does Newman come from um, after, or where did that family line go, you know, wh what were they before the 1400s or the 1300s? The Newman name may have come around around 1300s, which is interesting because 13 is the death card in tarot, and I do suspect that the tarot deck links with centuries. So I think 13 does link with the 13th century and 14 links with the 14th century and so on. Um, as far as this game is concerned and, you know, how what they do with the different generations, how the different generations are treated. So I have a strong suspicion that Newman actually is originally... Um, probably my best guess would be that they too go back to Plantagenet, that they are, um, that they are royalty. But what I also think is that my suspicion is that a lot of people assume the name Newman at the same time in order to confuse the situation, right? So there was a clones, there were clones because of the clones is about the, you know, it's not literal clones. These people aren't literally cloned. They just copy each other. They copy the son. Newman was the son. So they copy that person. And one of the ways they, I believe they copied was by copying the name. That way the name prol proliferates and um, you can't trace the origins. And that's a big part of this is trying to hide the origins of somebody or something. So I, there's possibly, you know, Newman, or possibly my family goes back to this person, Richard Kurt Hose, because this idea of bastard comes up again, again and again and again. Motherless child or a bastard or all of this stuff. Um, there are other places where this seems like it could be a factor because um, in the moon line there seems to be um, a place where the family is linked both to a mistress and to a queen of a king. I forget which king. It might be Henry the First. Um, I don't think it's Henry the First. I don't think that's the right. Anyway, uh, you know. But so, anyhow, um, where do we really come from? Where does my my targeted line come from? I know that they're massy, but I don't know. Um, it's because it's a female line. I don't know. Um, you know, beyond six generations, I don't know where it goes or where it's come from. Because the names don't get, you know, in European lineage, the names don't get passed through female lines, they get passed through male lines. So somehow Richard Kurt Hose is linked with homes with arch house, arch doors, doors with arches. So I think that houses with doors with arches are linked to 
you know, burying someone kind of in a cave almost. So, yeah, that suggests to me that maybe this person might be a, a direct relation, descendant, you know, ancestor. At 2.24 a.m., I get erased dreams about a spy school, different spies as children. So these were dreams that I had that were real dreams but were erased. Before I could remember them, all I could get was that it was about a spy school and different spies as children. So this is kind of what the system is. It turns everybody into spies. And I frequently think about how I wish I could just be an artist and a musician. But it looks like um, I'm supposed to be not a spy, but um, I've been surrounded by spies. And it looks like pretty much everybody in the entertainment industry has to deal with this. It's part of this system, and the monarch system is all tied into this, or the butterfly system, or whatever you want to call it, trauma-based mind control. Um, and I believe, my personal belief at this point is that this... You know, it may go back to an ancient occult tradition, but I feel like it probably really took flight because Europe has spent so many years at war. Um, that's my that's my feeling about it. Because normally a person wouldn't do this to their children. It doesn't make sense to abuse your child on purpose. Unless the world is so hostile that your kid has to be has to grow up with this um Constantly looking out for deception, constantly uh, ready to use deception, um, never trusting anyone. I mean, this is the kind of environment that, you know, um, I realize that um, has been around me. You know, I've been led astray and led to think that this isn't really going on. But once I realize it's going on, I realize that everyone around me basically lives in this world where they're constantly involved in deception. They expect everyone around them to be involved in deception. Um, abuse seems normal. Control, coercion, all of this stuff seems normal to them. It's just um, a completely different way than I raised my daughter. But the thing is, if you really live in this world, if you really live in a world where this is normal, where um, deception, coercion, confidence games, all of this stuff is just like par for the course. You might not be doing your kid any favors if you raise your kid the way I raise my kid, which is to, you know, basically focus on your own self, on good things, you know, not, not, not approaching people with distrust, um, you know, all this stuff. And I, I feel like, you know, I was ripped apart from her at the moment that I realized that this was going on. And um, I worry that, she, you know, because I know that she's being targeted by deceptive people and has been just like I have been. And so I worry that, you know, she doesn't have the tools to cope with this. But, you know, in a, in in a world that made sense, in a world that worked as advertised, a person wouldn't have to constantly be on guard for this type of thing because um people like this would be um addressed by you know things like law enforcement you know they once they pulled their first scam right they'd uh face accountability for it and they'd think twice you know i mean theoretically they'd think twice before they pulled the second scam you know maybe they'd be given opportunities to do something different than this but that's not how it works it looks to me like these you know, trauma-based, people who are subjected to trauma-based mind control, that our systems basically just um, treat them like they're just a certain <laughs> legitimate cultural subgroup and um, exploit them. I mean, basically they're exploited. So they're probably, you know, from what I've seen, the, the few that I've run into that I can tell are legitimate, probably legitimate, mind control subjects, um, they're constantly suspicious, they're constantly, you know, um, you know, I, I don't want to generalize too much about, but I mean, the ones that I've run into, um, constantly on the lookout for, um, you know, ready to kind of turn on you, basically, and go into attack mode, um, and seem to get pleasure out of deceiving and things. You know, it's just a, a value system that um, is completely foreign to me. 
And I think it's, um, I think it's sad, honestly, that kids get raised this way. I don't think that we should be promoting this at all. I don't think we should be treating it like it's cute. And I definitely don't think we should be, um, paying these people to engage in, you know, these spy games with unwilling participants, which I am, you know, I'm an unwilling participant to a point after a point, I feel like, well, maybe I can help change this. I don't know how much I can change because of how entrenched it seems to be, but, um, I really hope I can help change it because I don't think this should be continued. It certainly should not be endorsed by the systems like the um, government systems anymore because this is child abuse and child exploitation and it's really, un you know, our, our modern sensibilities don't allow for this. The only reason why this group continues is able to continue is because they are such a privileged group to begin with and they've, they're um, from, you know, power... They come from a p positions of power, not that, not necessarily the monarch children, but the people who are um, manipulating them at the higher levels are very powerful. Um, but they're still simply abusing children. Then there's something about marijuana, like the bud in the tweet I, I retweeted or I screenshotted about psychosis. So this is another, I think, you know, um, to me, it looks like corruption on the part of publications and science, quote unquote science, and which, you know, that's the other danger here is that all of a sudden nothing seems true anymore. Like people stop just even caring about empirical evidence and facts and things like this. So it appears that the medical, you know, certain groups within the medicine and science are desperately looking for a link between marijuana use and psychosis and other types of health problems because they really want to stop cannabis legalization and, can and the acceptance, the normalization of cannabis use. They know what normalization looks like and they're scared to death that cannabis use is going to become normalized because it is a threat to other industries. It is a threat to the alcohol, tobacco, pharmaceutical, and chemical industries because of all the things that this plant can be used for. So um, they want to attack people who use cannabis. They want to attack people who promote cannabis. And they want to be able to say that because they use cannabis, it's making them psychotic. And they want to continue this tradition of um, trumped up psych holds used as a control mechanism. So um, that so a recent article came out in the Rolling Stone of all places, trying to you know talking about these studies, trying you know really obviously trying to link marijuana with psychosis, and they have not been able to really do it in a scientific way because guess what? There's not a link. I really don't think there is a link. Um, then I get these phrases, deep state, state school and deep state trafficking. And I think this trafficking, it's something I've been thinking about this, um, idea of trafficking with trauma victims, but it's also drug trafficking. It's all linked together, but this just came in. And what I think is kind of funny about this, I mean, trafficking is a word I use a lot because it seems accurate. I don't use this word school a lot, although the um, people involved in these monarch systems use this, and it basically means mind control, but um, it's a system of teaching people to be part of this system, I think. It involves, these so-called schools involve things like um, directed energy weapons and gang stalking, and um, it's just an indoctrin indoctrination process. And it doesn't, in my case, they ca they've been using this word school, you know, to describe that, an indoctrination process, um, and basically just keeping me imprisoned and trapped and under attack. But um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, it's not voluntary. In my case, it's not voluntary. So I don't know how many people are attending these deep state schools voluntarily, but it's not voluntary. Mind control generally isn't voluntary because it's control. Most people don't sign up to be under someone else's control. It's slavery. Um, but what I think of funny is that the deep state 
um, because that's not, I never, deep state is not really part of my, I don't use that word much, if at all, ever in my normal. So this is coming to me in my dreams. There was the deep state toothbrush and there's the deep state schools and things. This is being sent to me from an outside source, this, this, this terminology, deep state. And I think it's funny because I read, <clears throat> I was looking at Twitter this morning and somebody criticized, I think it was, um, Associated Press for using the word deep state as if it actually exists. So there's still a group of people out there trying to say that there's no such thing as a deep state, that the whole concept of a deep state is a conspiracy theory, but that's that in and of itself is disinformation. There is definitely a deep state. I mean, there's definitely links between spy agencies, you know, and they work together and um, not just spy agencies within the United States, of which there are many, I mean, many, many, many spy agencies. Um, but spy agencies around the world are linked together. So even deep state might even not be, I mean, deep state might refer to the spy agencies in the United States, but, and, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, I mean, the whole idea of, um, people who are not elected working for the government, isn't that weird. That's what a civil servant is. It's just that, um, these are people who are also engaged in secret things. Um, and my complaint about this is the black ops, which are, um, you know, not just, um, my understanding or black bag ops or however you want to say it, the ones that are not just secret, but illegal and they're secret because they're illegal. They're not, um, secret because, um, these people are engaged in, in things that are supposed to be protecting national security, but they're, they're black ops, they're human trafficking, they're drug trafficking, uh, infiltration of people that shouldn't be infiltrated and things like that. And it seems like it's caused a lot of problems for me because my situation is all linked into this, but they've, they've protected traffickers and, um, by protecting traffickers, they are not protecting people who are harmed by traffickers, whether they're human traffickers and they're the victims of human trafficking, or these are drug traffickers and somebody's harmed by drug trafficking operation, especially somebody who's not involved in the drug trafficking operation. Um, and, you know, back in the olden days, like in the 80s, marijuana was illegal. Um, and there's still a lot of people who, you know, sort of think in these terms that, you know, marijuana is this, you know, even though it's legal and that means that it's not, you know, trafficking, at least in those places where it's legal and being, you know, used and distributed legally, it's, it's something else now. This isn't, we're not in a pro prohibition era. I mean, federally, yes, it still is. It shouldn't be, but it's, you know, okay. Um, and then uh, this idea of locations on my back, like a garden or landscape. So this idea of the, all this landscaping that people are doing all over Portland right now. Oh my God. It's just like the entire town has been, I feel like it's been buried under an avalanche of home improvement money. I've never seen, I mean, even when people like give donations, like when Old Town Eureka was renovated, which by the way, I think might've been partly funded through the trafficking related to me that was in the late seventies and the early eighties. But even then you had, you know, people buying, donating all of this stuff. And there was a renovation of old town Eureka. What I see going on in Portland to me dwarfs what I saw going on in Eureka and old town. And that was a big renovation project, but in Portland, it's just a house by house or business by business. They just all of a sudden, are doing work. It has to be huge. There's no way they could hide what they're doing. And you know, you'll walk by a front yard and maybe you don't see anything. Then you kind of peek in the backyard. You see a brand new fence. You know, it's just, it's all over the place. Some of it is, you know, a little subtler than others, but it's all over. And it's been going on longer than just this year. I see that now, but it's really exploded this year. Um, idea of a guy in a car on the lawn, like a raised, the, these raised beds. That's another thing that's showing up all over. Everybody's got raised beds now. Like 
especially this year, but within, say, the past five, ten years, lots of new raised beds around Portland. Okay, Deep State thinks it's being subtle. So this is just like, you know, this is like Millicent in her car doing the final um, Techno Crime Fighters episode, and then this person parks, and in my in my image of this, it's like a big, like, early 70s car, one of those big boats at the period of time when, before um, they started making cars smaller, they were just making them bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> it's like that kind of car, just parked on a lawn. Deep State thinks it's being subtle.